Hey, good morning, doctors. It's Dr. Adishina again. Hey, how you doing? Listen, I hope you're having a great day today. I just want to encourage you. Listen, it's 2020, and there's some things you need to understand about the process. All right? This USMLE exam is just the first step. There's still more to come. I wanted to tell you a story. When I was a resident, I did a trauma rotation. And trauma is insane. When you guys do trauma, you see exactly what I'm talking about if you ended up doing it. But in emergency medicine, we have to do a trauma rotation. In my third year, I had to work 18 hours every day, literally. I get up at 10 a.m. and I don't come back home till almost 10 a.m. the next morning, all right? It was crazy, it was crazy, it was crazy. All right, and something like that. Actually, I was, I was, I was going to work, sorry, about uh, maybe three, maybe like actually four, 4 p.m. in the evening, uh, afternoon. I don't come back to 10 a.m. the next day. And it was for Christmas, and I worked five days straight of 18 hours. It was the worst time of my life when it talks about work. I did, I did the math, 108 hours. I, I mean, like, almost 90-something hours in within five to six days. Talk about physical and mental exhaustion where you're doing trauma and patients are getting into car accident after car accident and stab wounds and gunshot wounds, and, and, and I'm running up and down, up and down. It was hard. It was painful. It was difficult. All right? I was so exhausted after the fifth day that my brain was frozen like a stone. But you know what it is? Pain is part of the process. I learned something during that rotation. Sometimes in life, you feel like, oh, you've pushed yourself past the limit. You've already done everything you possibly can. But I tell you so one thing. No, you haven't. The human body has the ability to adapt to so much stress and you have not even touched the tip of the iceberg yet. So, after that five days, obviously I was tired. I needed about a two or three days just to even recover from that. But I never forgot it. I realized, wow, I could stay up all night, 18 hours for five days straight. And I was thinking, right? We're not talking about just staying up, right? I've got like 18, 20 people on my sensors. You know, sick patients, they're in the surgical ICU, you know, tra you know, after trauma, they're going to the operating room, I'm writing notes, you know, I'm doing procedures, like, but it made me a better doctor. It doesn't matter what kind of trauma comes to the ER today. I can handle it. You need a chest tube, I throw it in by like, you know, five to 10 minutes, I throw a chest tube in. You need a central line, man, I was throwing central lines into people, you know, putting uh, interosseous into needle into people's TBS, and guess what? I learned so much in five days that showed me that that is the only way you're going to learn stuff. So if you're studying for the USMLA right now and you're going through that pain, that pain is what's going to make you a better human being. It's going to make you a better doctor. Learning this information will separate you from the rest of the pack. And I want you to embrace the pain because the pain is temporary. It's a, again, last for a minute, a day, or even six months. But I guarantee you, when you get that 240, you're going to walk away and be smiling. You're going to feel on top of the world. That joy will never leave you for the rest of your life because no one will ever know what it means to get that score. You understand what I'm saying? So this is your early morning routine where you feel tired, where you feel exhausted, and you don't feel like doing this anymore. I want to tell you, I want to challenge you, boy. I want to challenge you, girl. Listen, this is just the beginning. Embrace the pain. Listen, in life, the only way we get better as human beings is through pain. And if you don't embrace it, you're going to settle for mediocrity. You're going to settle for failure. I'm telling you, that is the only price we got to pay to become better. And in medicine, come on, society expects the best from you. You're going to be walking into a patient's room, I guarantee you, two, three years from now, 
Even if it's your first day as an intern and you're going to be scared the first day on the job. Okay? But it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. We're going to train you. I remember when I was a resident, right? And I used to be scared of going to patient's room because I didn't want to face my fear because of, I didn't know what I was doing. And one of my residents, my chief resident said, Lake K, when they call that bell upstairs and they say, you know, code blue, or they say, you know, doctor to room seven, you better be the first one to go in there. That was the best advice I ever got. You know what? I started doing it. The first day I was scared. The nurses asked me, dude, what do you want to give? What do you want to do? All right, patient is coding. Blood pressure is 60 over 40. Heart rate is 140. Patient is atrial fibrillation. And I'm like, um, um, let's do uh, dialtism. Uh, um, uh. But you know what? I got better over time. My confidence started rising. I did for the first month, second month. By my third or fourth month, I was so confident because I started seeing sicker patients. And that's what I realized. I had to overcome my fears. So when you're studying those pathways, and you're tired, you're exhausted, you're like, man, what the hell is methylmalonic acid? Who gives a damn? Well, I'm telling you to give a damn. Because the MBMA writers do, and you better do. You understand what I'm saying? You see methylmalonic acid like seven times, and you know, okay, it's a vitamin B12 deficiency problem, right? It needs vitamin B12, and then you're like, it's going to stick. Not the first time, not the second time, not the third time sometimes, but you got to stick with it. That's the process. You can't shortcut it, all right? Just like I had to go through that pain, almost 100 hours. Just I had to face my fears of going to see patients even when I don't know what the patient is in there for. Today, I'm gonna walk into my ER right now. Yesterday, I saw 33 patients. You think I was scared walking into the room? No, there was nobody behind me. There was no attending for me to ask a question like, Dr. X, what should I do? The nurses are depending on me to make the decision. If I didn't get the training that I did, if I didn't go through the pain that I went through in the three years of emergency medicine residency training, learning all this stuff for USML, getting that information in my brain, you really think I can practice medicine without getting scared of the decision I have to make that's gonna affect people's lives? Yeah. What you're gonna say out of your mouth, moving forward, people are gonna respect it. Not only that, they're gonna listen to you. So you better know your stuff, all right? 2020, guys, let's do it. Let's get it, guys. I believe in you. You don't give up on me. You don't give up on yourself. All right? The whole world is watching. I want to see you guys get that 240. It's 2020. It's your boy, Dr. Adishina, again. Until I see you guys next time. You guys, have a awesome day. Bye-bye.